1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 15 through 27. But if the unbeliever leaves, let it be so. The brother or sister is not bound in such circumstances. God has called us to live in peace. How do you know, wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, husband, whether you will save your wife? Nevertheless, each person should live as a believer in whatever situation the Lord has assigned them, just as God has called them. This is the rule. Was a man already circumcised when he was called? He should not become uncircumcised. Was a man uncircumcised when he was called? He should not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing. Keeping God's command is what counts. Each person should remain in the situation they were in when God called them. Were you a slave when you were called? Don't let it trouble you, although if you gain, gain your freedom to do so. For the one who was a slave when called to faith in the Lord of the Lord's freed person. Similarly, the one who was free when called is Christ's slave. You were bought at a price. Do not become slaves of human beings. Brothers and sisters, each person has a responsibility to God, should remain in the situation they were in when God called them. Now about virgins, I have no command from the Lord, but I give judgment as one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. Because of the present crisis, I think that it is good for a man to remain as he is. Are you pledged to a woman? Do not seek to be released. Are you free from such a commitment? Do not look for a wife. This verse is misused by some as a loophole to get out of a marriage. But Paul's statement were given to encourage the Christian spouse to try to get along with the unbeliever and make the marriage work. If, however, the unbelieving spouse insisted on leaving, Paul said to let him or her go. The only alternative would be for the Christian to deny his or her faith to preserve the marriage, and that would be worse than dissolving the marriage. Paul's chef purpose in writing this was to urge the married couples to seek unity, not separation. Apparently, the Corinthians were ready to make wholesale changes without thinking through ramifications. Paul was writing to say that people would be Christians where they are. You can do God's work and demonstrate your faith anywhere. If you became a Christian after marriage and your spouse is not a believer, remember that you don't have to be married to a Christian to live for Christ. Don't assume that you are in the wrong place or stuck with the wrong person. You may just be where God wants you to be. The ceremony of the circumcision was an important part of the Jews' relationship with God. In fact, before Christ came, circumcision was commanded by God for those who claimed to follow him. But after Christ's death, circumcision was no longer necessary. Pleasing God and obeying him is more important than observing traditional ceremonies. Often, we are so concerned about what we could be doing for God somewhere else that we miss great opportunities right where we are. Paul says that when someone becomes a Christian, he or she should usually continue with the work he or she has previously been doing, provided it isn't immoral or unethical. Every job can become Christian work when you realize that the purpose of your life is to honor, serve, and speak out for Christ. Because God has placed you where you are, look carefully for your opportunities to serve him there. Slavery was common throughout the Roman Empire. Some Christians in the Corinthian church were undoubtedly slaves. Paul said, although the Christian slaves were slaves to other human beings, they were free from the power of sin in their lives. People today are slaves to sin until they commit their lives to Christ, who alone can conquer sin's power. Sin, pride, and fear no longer have any claim over us, just as a slave owner no longer has power over the slave he has sold. The Bible says we become Christ's slaves when we become Christians, but this actually means we gain our freedom because sin no longer controls us. Paul probably foresaw the impeding persecution that the Roman government would soon bring upon Christians. He gave this particular advice because being unmarried would mean less suffering and more freedom to throw one's life into the cause of Christ, even to the point of fiercely dying for him. Paul's advice reveals his single-minded devotion to spreading the good news.